In 2001, members of the Ipswich Greyhound Racing Club Committee hatched a plan to illegally reposition the 431 metre starting boxes for the purpose of rigging races. I've got evidence there too, Nick, of um, the committee at um, Ipswich there uh, switching the starting boxes around. The Ipswich starting boxes got uh, removed without permission and that was to turn them on a slight angle to advantage the eight dog. So what they do is they put in a very fast beginner that comes out the boxes and it cuts the others off on the bend and then they bunch up and go backwards and the eight dog kicks away and wins at any odds, 30 to 1, 50 to 1, whatever. That's happened so many times at Ipswich over so 400 boxes after they've moved it. You know, Lorraine, yeah, she handed a lot of evidence over me where the committee changed the start box and they tried to blame Tommy Patterson when he died. In 2004, word had begun to surface that the starting boxes were moved, and to hide their involvement, the committee contingent involved started a rumour shifting the blame onto deceased Greyhound trainer, the late Tom Patterson, who died earlier in 2002. Tom was survived by his wife Lorraine, who was at the time vice president of the club. Standing firm to keep club operations on the level, and lacking the depravity to rig races, Lorraine was scorned by the committee contingent who took every opportunity to scrutinise, harass and falsely vilify her. As well as verbal abuse and vandalism to her club car park space, in particular was a scandal in which Lorraine was falsely accused of distributing illegitimate complimentary club passes. It didn't matter, however, that it was all committee members' duty and authority to promote the club by distributing such passes, or that the passes in question were perfectly legitimate, so long as there was enough of a committee vote to oppose Lorraine. Lorraine defended her integrity by collecting reputable testimony of her ethical conduct, but was still voted out of her position of vice president regardless. So when blame for the moving of the starting boxes was dumped on Lorraine's late husband Tom Patterson, and his name was dragged through the mud, she wasn't going to stand for it. Lorraine procured statutory declarations from club members, including a member of the committee, who witnessed the formation and unfolding of the plan to move the 431 metre starting boxes. Lorraine took her evidence to the Greyhound Racing Authority, now known as Racing Queensland. Lorraine even pleaded her case directly to the GRA Chief Steward Danny Ryan, I've got all the evidence. I've got solicitor's letters, I've got um, letters from the odds budsman, the whole lot. This needs to come out too, to show what gets um, done behind the scenes. And that, now, and then that advantage the eight dog, and that's a federal federal offence, touching anything, boxes, starting boxes, that, that's the federal government. The evidence should have been enough to clear Lorraine's deceased husband's name and incriminate those responsible. However, the GRA ignored the evidence and refused to take action on a criminal and federal offence. Lorraine continued to be harassed, her plight falling on deaf ears. This example goes to show the bullying tactics used by corrupted enterprise within the greyhound racing industry. Just what they do, and then they, they will blame someone else for it. You know, the, the evidence is there. This needs to go higher and just clean the system up. So in the future, no one wants to play. No one wants to get involved in the corruption. No one wants to intimidate anyone. You know, get, get rid of the bullies. You know, that's where the end of that school, Ned. Not in these big organisations. <laughs> get rid of the bullies. Make them stand up and, and make them face the truth and where they've gone wrong and hurt people. Like Kerry Watson. You know, she's done so much damage to not only me, to greyhound racing, to all the trainers. Get some good, happy people, honest people in the game. People that are looking, sitting down at a board meeting and say, how do we improve this racing game? Not worrying about the back pocket or what we can do to better the trots or better the horses. Let's, let's start off with about time the Greyhound um, code had a fair go, Ned. About time they had a fair go for a change. You know, and then people start being happy. You walk out the races, no one smiles. It's about time that they did, Ed. They're not happy because of the system. Cynthia Suttle, who supported Lorraine during her ordeal, also suffered intimidation and harassment for speaking out. There was another one, Cynthia. Cynthia Suttle. Yeah, well, Cynthia started to come forward. One night I rung her and she didn't want to talk anymore. She'd come home to one of her dogs being dead. There's been quite a few trainers that once they want to come forward and speak up, 
it's funny they're at the races and they come home and the dog's dead and to me that's what's happened to me along the way all the time is meaning that's a calling card saying if you don't shut up we'll kill all your dogs so what happens people clam up walk away i'm not going to walk away i'm coming to knock them out their ivory tower so i'm getting to the bottom the truth i'm not going to stop 